I got interested in frogs uh, based on the fact that we really didn't have the right kind of model organism that I was looking for to be able to address the sheer number of genes that have been implicated in risk for psychiatric disorders. So psychiatric disorders have hundreds of genes that contribute risk. And what's cool is that in frogs, we're able to make just half of their brain mutant. So that means that we can watch how these brains develop and compare that half of the brain that has the mutation with the other half of the brain that doesn't. Um, and that's what's behind me here. So where you see red, we've introduced a mutation into the frog embryo. And so that allows us to pick up really subtle effects that are caused by a loss of this gene during development. And we're able to look uh, at high resolution to look at each one of these cells and start to, again, compare a mutated half to a control half. When we went into this, we really didn't know what to expect. The most surprising thing has been that when we looked at the top 10 autism risk genes in frogs, all 10 of them changed the size of the frog's forebrain. So the forebrain is really the region of the brain that's responsible for higher order thinking, learning, uh, social interactions. And so the fact that we were getting similar effects on anatomy for all 10 of these genes was really surprising to us. One of the best things about working with frogs is that doing drug screening is simple. We put the drugs in the water with the tadpoles and they absorb it into their brain. And we've done that now with 133 compounds. We found that estrogen actually inhibits a, a pathway during development. And so that's been really interesting to us because there's a profound sex bias in autism diagnosis with four times as many males as females being affected. So now, where we're really digging into understanding what estrogen is doing during brain development.